I'm Chuck, KK6USY for Ham Radio Vincers. Ever wonder what type of wire to use for your antenna project? Well, today we're going to look at antenna wire and see what might be best for your project. Oh, and first, check this out. Don't do this at home or at the park. You might get some crazy looks. Okay, don't ask me how I know you might get funny looks. <laughs> I kind of know. If you want to know what I was doing out there at the park, uh, pulling that thing all over the place, uh, wait, make sure you stick around to the end, because someplace in this video I will show why I was doing that, and that's pretty good reason. So stick around, make sure you stick around to the end. Now talking about wires with hands is like talking about trucks with uh, truck enthusiasts. You know, which is the best, or which one do you like best? Chevy, Ford, Dodge, you know, maybe Toyota. And also, if you talk to hams about which radio they prefer, you probably get Yaesu, Icom, or Kenwood. Maybe even a Bofang, depending on the, uh, the license. Just like all those things, if you ask a ham which wire he prefers, you're probably gonna get maybe five different answers if you, have, if you ask five hams. But if three of those hams owns the Cartina, uh, description down below where you can get it. Uh, you might only get three answers. Three for that one and two for something else. You never know. Okay, where was I? Uh, yeah, if you ask hams that, you're gonna get a bunch of different answers and that's okay because everybody has their own preference and their preference is their preference. Let's move on. Okay, wire comes in all types of different materials. It, it can come in aluminum uh, with an aluminum clad around it. It comes steel with an aluminum clad around it. It can come with Kevlar in the sheathing to make it stronger, usually copper wire there, or just plain old copper. So you might be surprised, the, uh, the best conductive material for uh, antennas and stuff like that is actually made from silver. But nobody makes silver wire. Copper was number two, aluminum was somewhere in the middle, and steel was pretty much at the bottom. Not that it doesn't work and the copper clad around each of those, aluminum and steel, helps a little bit right there. But the only thing I would say with steel wire, like poly stealth, make sure that if you have any bare connections on it, that you use liquid tape to seal it up. Otherwise it could rust and eventually fail. Everybody has their favorite wire, I'm sure, and I have mine also. Mine depends on where I'm going to deploy the antenna. Okay, will it be a portable antenna? Is it gonna be something for your home QTH? Or is it gonna be something you take on Poda, Soda, maybe up in the mountains, come back to base camp, the, the trout are, are jumping out there, you got your fishing rod, you got your hooks, but you forgot your fishing line. Can you use that 26 gauge wire to catch a fish? I don't know, I'm sure it's possible. Okay, so wire comes in all sizes. Uh, it's measured in gauge. Now, if you have 26 gauge and you have 12 gauge, the 26 gauge is gonna be smaller, even though the number's bigger, and the 12 gauge is gonna be bigger, even though the number's smaller. Kind of backwards, you think, the way of what you would actually think, but that's the way they measure it. Wait, let me show you an example of that. Maybe I have some really big wire and some really small wire, and I'll show that to you now. All right, guys, this is uh, the, uh, pretty sure this is aluminum clad, but it's speaker cable or speaker wire, 22 gauge. Uh, you get, if you buy, like, like I said, if you buy 500 feet, you have 1,000 feet because there's two pieces, okay? Really good stuff. I make my radials out of this because you don't need really super good wire for your radials, okay? We talked about gauge size. Now, here's some gauge. This is the 22 gauge. Oh, this actually, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is 22 gauge. This is 12 gauge, okay? This stuff here, look at the size difference. This is 26 gauge, and this is also 26 gauge. Even the 26 gauge, the poly stealth is really, really small and thin, guys. Now, let me show you something about the poly stealth <laughs> that I don't like. So I've got it on a winder, and when you unwind it, this is what you get. You guys see how it's all kinked? Not kinked but it all has memory in it, okay? Now here's the, the other stuff that I got. Now it shows a little bit of it, but not as bad. Okay, a little bit right there, 
but you just move it like that and it straightens out. So does this, sort of. Has a lot of memory though, and that's one thing I don't like about the PolyStealth. Let's see if I have any big wire. Oh, here we go. 12 gauge, and now we're looking at eight gauge. Look at the difference in size. Remember I told you guys that uh, as the number gets smaller, the wire gets bigger. And it goes to zero, and then it goes to double lot and triple lot. Now for me, a portable wire needs to be of lightweight, needs to be pliable, and above all, it needs to be strong enough to do the job. The reason it needs to be light is you're, you're putting up on a collapsible pole that might be kind of lightweight. Uh, bigger wire and heavier jacketed wire will weigh that thing down and bend it pretty good. And you don't want to put any undue stress on it. Now it needs to be pliable because when you're winding your antenna around the, your winder or what, however you wind it up, you want it to be easy to do. And there's some wires that just aren't that easy. Now your wire also needs to be strong so it will hold up to your daily use or monthly or yearly use of the antenna that you're going to actually have it on. So you got to make sure it's fairly strong and most wire will be, will be strong enough. There's a few exceptions. The aluminum wire I'm going to show you in this video is what I use for experimenting and for my ground radios because for ground radios I want something light and I don't want to spend a bunch of money because they don't have to be expensive wire for ground radios. So I usually use the aluminum, uh, the copper clad aluminum wire speaker wire you buy 200 feet you get 400 feet because there's two pieces a black and a red or sometimes just clear now when we were looking for wire to put in our, our cartena uh, the apollo and the mercury kits we looked a lot at a lot of wires we looked at poly stealth we look we even looked at dx commander's wire but his wire is a little bit heavy duty for a portable antenna very good stuff though check him out if you're looking for an antenna he sells an awesome antenna also Kudos for Callum for making such a great antenna. Now, we looked at all those different ones and I had already had experience with the silicone wire. I made sure that each of the other three guys at the time got some of that to check it out and they all really loved it. We've also heard from multiple people that have used our wire. Even if they don't buy our kits, they still buy the wire because it's just so pliable. It works so good and believe me, I wind thousands of feet of wire for our kits uh, every week or so and I don't want to be messing with uh, certain wires uh, that are hard and don't want to wind on nice. I don't even do the figure eight with the with the uh, the silicone wire. You don't need to, but if that's your deal, you go ahead and do it that way anyhow. It's your antenna. Now, when Jim joined the crew, also uh, he had already expressed that he liked the wire also. So we're all in pretty much agreement. And like I said, pretty much everybody that's ever used the wire likes the wire. Is it the strongest wire out there? No, it's not. Does it work really well? Yes, it does. Now, wire for your QTH, I think, needs to be a different type of wire. It's gonna be up all the time. It's gonna be in the elements every day. And with if you got in a tree or whatever, however you have it up, it's gonna be that back and forth the wind. So I think it needs to be a little heavier duty. And I probably wouldn't pick the silicone wire for that. Now, for that, I might take the uh, Poly Stealth because it's steel, it is stronger. Now, if you're in an HOA, the Poly Stealth is really a way to go. And if you're going up to Say you only run 100 watts. I've run 100 watts through 26 gauge, even more than that a few times. You might want to bump up just a little bit, but the Poly Stealth has a really thin, thin uh, outer jacket on it. And when you get it up high in the air there, it's pretty hard to see. Um, it's, it's up to you on your HOAs. You know what you can and can't get away with. Uh, but that's a good choice also because it is strong and it's pretty hard to see. And like I said, if you're going to run some big power, make sure you use a little bit bigger wire just to be safe. And if you do have some type of a, a bare spot on it, make sure you use liquid tape or cover it with some kind of, or just regular tape, if nothing else. If that's all you have, use that. You can also use uh, heat shrink. That would also work really well also. And I prefer the heat shrink with the little glue in it. And I think that just seals it just a little bit better. Okay, guys, this is liquid tape. Uh, really good to have around for all your antenna building needs. Here is some tape. This is a brand that was told to be by a really good ham who's been doing this for a long time. He says this is the stuff to get. Now I do buy cheaper stuff for practice, for just playing around, but uh, usually this is what I use, anything important. And like I said, heat shrink also. Another good choice for wire is the wire that has Kevlar built into the insulation. Really strong, but be warned, it's really expensive. Now I've had my double up for five to six, maybe seven years now. I bought that from DX Engineering as a kit. It's a multiple band uh, dipole is what they call it. 
And the wire it came with is really, really good. I ordered it for a 160 antenna, cut it in half and set it up for 80 and save the extra wire. Really good wire, a little too heavy for portable though. Also the, uh, the big box stores sell pretty nice wire, pretty heavy duty, but sometimes if you look at it, certain ones have like a clear finish on it, which makes them not as pliable. And then sometimes it ends up coming off. And I'll try to show you an example of that if I have some laying around. Okay, so this is like wire from the big box store. If you see this right here, that's like a clear coating. Now the clear coating is good because it does protect the wire, but if you're using it for portable, it makes it a little bit hard to wind. Good wire if you're making it for your house though. Okay, well, I hope this discussion has helped you guys along. Oh, that's right. I was going to show you guys why I was so violently pulling on my antenna wire. Well, there's been some discussion uh, out there about how much our, our silicone wire may or may not stretch. So I decided I'd abuse it a little bit and check it. So let's do that now. Okay, guys, so this is the... This doesn't really matter on the SWR, it's just gonna be a reference. We're at 1.49 to 1.5. And uh, then we're, now we're gonna go over and we're gonna grab the, uh, the wire on the antenna and see what, if it'll stretch. So you can see it just varying a little bit there. So let me go do that. Let me set the camera up and uh, so you guys can actually see me do this. But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray As you fade away Okay guys, as you can see, ridiculous comments made by people uh, It didn't stretch enough to make any difference if it did stretch So that's all that matters, as long as you're, you tune it, your SWR stays where it's supposed to be You're good So silicone wire passes the test, for sure now that was pretty drastic, wasn't it guys? Uh, I hope you guys don't treat your antennas that way and I usually don't either. But I did want to show you that in actuality, people talking about wire stretching and stuff like that, you're, if you're using a mast, your mast is taking up that uh, pole on it in the wind or whatever, just like your fishing pole would when you got the big one on, right? So uh, I pretty much knew it was gonna pass. And you could, I could have measured it and checked the exact length and all that, but I wasn't gonna do all that. I didn't think it was necessary, to tell you the truth. And all, which, all wire stretches. Now, if you had your antenna up in a tree with a really sturdy branch and you got it stuck up there and you're pulling and yanking on it and all that stuff, well, whose fault is that really? Is it the wires? Probably not. Just be careful how you put your antennas up and think about getting them down later. If you guys have your favorite wire or you prefer a certain wire, Put it down in the comments. That way you can help the, the, uh, the rest of the hams out here that are watching this to find out different types of wire that that's available and something that might be good for their use. And that would make their antenna building process a lot better. Hopefully everybody got something out of this. And if it did, give me the thumbs up. And if you're new here, think about subscribing and uh, hit that bell, hit all. That way you get all my new content and go back and watch some of my older content. There's a lot of great information in there, for, especially for new hams.